Hello and thank you for coming by. My name is Dirk Noy and I'm presenting two videos on speech intelligibility. This first one shows how to improve speech intelligibility in a space by minimizing reverberation inside that particular space. This is one of the two options that we can employ to improve the speech intelligibility in a space. Let's take a look at this particular room. This is a check-in hall at Zurich Airport, pre-remodeling. There was a big project a couple of years back to remodel this entire space, and we needed to make sure that the sound reinforcement system, the PA system, was clearly audible and clearly with a high speech intelligibility inside the space. In these types of projects, we work with acoustical simulation models uh, shown here. This is a three-dimensional representation of the space in question. In the center, you see the check-in counters and those red lines uh, and the red dots with the, the Bs, they display loudspeakers positions and orientation. Uh, we can simulate the sound field projected by the loudspeakers inside the space. Now what we can also simulate is the room acoustical surfaces that are inside the space. As you remember from the first slide, uh, there was a lot of void ceiling space that we're trying to use for acoustical baffles. Baffles are acoustical elements that are hung from the ceiling in a vertical fashion. Uh, being exposed to the sound field on both sides. It's like longitudinal, long uh, pieces of uh, whatever it is, fluffy stuff usually, that is hung from the ceiling. And if you look up, you see a kind of a kind of a long lines of these materials uh, hung from the ceiling. You see here a simulation result curve uh, on the x-axis. There's a frequency in from low to mid to high, and the y-axis going upward is the reverberation time, the RT60 reverberation time, in fact, in seconds, zero from to 4.5 seconds. The blue line is showing the reverberation over frequency of the non-treated space. If we would take the check-in hall and we would not treat any surface with any acoustical material, we'd have that reverberation time. That is clearly too high. 3.5 seconds in a space like that is very high. And you see by introducing multiple percentages of baffles that I just explained, from 40, 50, 60, and 80 percent, we bring down these reverberation time curves. The brown to the purple or pinkish curve uh, shows that. Now, the real question is, what type of speech intelligibility is connected to the particular uh, baffle density? Uh, if you think about it, hanging a lot of baffles is certainly probably good for acoustics, but it's also very expensive because you have to buy the material and hire the people to mount the material at the ceiling. So we have to find the exact correct quantity of absorption to be able to maintain correct speech intelligibility inside the space. This particular graph is a mapping uh, diagram and it shows the distribution of speech intelligibility with no absorption in the space. We have zero absorption in the space, empty ceiling basically, no baffles. And you see the speech intelligibility is in that kind of a brightish, bluish kind of, and some darkish bluish. If you look at the scale on the right side, this is like in the 0.4, maybe some zones, 0.5, a little higher type zone. This is um, certainly on the lower uh, parts uh, is not high enough because we have to have a mean value of 0.5 for sure, uh, at least to to uh, have that. We have too many too many positions where there's not enough speech intelligibility with an empty hall. Let's go. So if we introduce 40% baffles at the ceiling uh, shown here, that means 40% of the ceiling is covered with baffles with a distance of one meter each. So there's still a lot of open space at the ceiling, but nevertheless, there also are quite a few of those baffles up there. You see that we have uh, some yellow spots on the graph. That means there the speech intelligibility is really pretty high, 0 0.6, 0 0.65-ish 
uh, in those zones. We have the distribution graph on the bottom left. You see where exactly the speech intelligibility is distributed. Uh, you see the, the, that we have a mean uh, which is higher than before of 0.54 in that particular situation. Now let's increase the absorption quantity. Let's go to 50%. You see, obviously, that there's more yellow, and also the graph on the bottom left went further to the right, meaning it slid upwards a little bit. We have a STI 0.51 to 0.59. This is pretty good, too. Let's go to 60%. This is even more of the ceiling now covered with the baffles. You see, obviously, that we have a higher STI uh, value here again. That's exactly the point I'm trying to make here. If we increase the absorption quantity, we are reducing the reverberation time in the space. And then as a result, we have a higher speech intelligibility. Then the last one I'm showing here is we have 80% coverage. This is a lot of the ceiling. It is a lot of material. This is expensive to buy and expensive to put. Uh, but it's also really, really good in speech intelligibility. You see there's even some spots that are going to orange or red on the right side there. This is like a really super concert hall quality almost, which is certainly not needed in an airport. Let's look at this chart here. We have a couple of uh, comparisons from other airports here uh, that show certain STI values. And you see... The, at the bottom, the Zurich airport scenarios with the percentages of baffles. And you see coming from experience and comparison with these other airports that uh, uh, owners of uh, Zurich airport, they decided to go for the 60% baffle option on the ceiling, meaning 60% of the ceiling is in fact covered by baffles with one meter distance. And we uh, re result, resulting speech intelligibility is given here, as you can see. So that was chosen as the actual result. You see here the installed baffles. These are these uh, these baffles that I mentioned. They're a little denser actually in the installation, uh, and they're also varying slightly in the installation because not everywhere. Uh, we could actually hang them as we would have liked to uh, because there were some other installations in the in the space, as you also can see here. So the overall distribution is still at 60% and we have remained the speech intelligibility as we had targeted it. This is the finished uh, project. You see the check-in hall here now with the check-in counters in the center and uh, the new ceiling elements here. Of course, this is closed. The open ceiling is around the edge of this uh, um, of this piece of furniture where people actually stand in line to check in. So, what we what did we did we learn here? This is the the case study, as I mentioned, for the first part of the speech intelligibility videos. Uh, we have when we do not treat the room as speech intelligibility given here as 0.47, the lower uh, part of the range. And if we do actually reduce the reverberation by including, by adding absorption into the space, we can raise that number to 0.52, meaning that we have a delta plus of 0.05. This is in terms of speech intelligibility pretty massive. Uh, this is clearly audible uh, that there's a, a way better speech intelligibility given by this treatment in the, in the ceiling. Okay, this concludes the first part of this uh, case study and uh, we'll get to the second video in a couple of minutes. Hopefully you will join us too. Thank you for listening. Ciao.